You ready? Oh. Okay, folks, it's 6 o'clock. I call the meeting to order. Please, please join someone in the flag. Okay, I've had everyone, now Amber's looked at it, Cassandra's gone all the way through it, so once you approve terms of use, which is pretty close to what's already on the website, um, which should be, I think, it could cover us, um, I can finish formatting and give it to her, hand off to her next week, and she said she'd be able to post it on the website. Sounds like I should probably give you another copy. I thought it was, I thought it would be. I think you was a copy that that was your final version that last me to give us, right? Um, of the ter yeah, the terms of yeah. use that you asked me to give, and it's been updated since for a couple yeah. things for the Gaffney, the Nitwits don't meet there anymore, you know. So and Amber's phone number, so I've updated everything and had everyone, the, all the knowledge experts, review it. It's just the terms of use that you had asked for. Okay. I wanted to make sure that that was okay with you. Yeah, I thought that was fine. I thought the version we had was good. Right? Okay. Yep. Okay. Great. And then the second uh, question is on the little free library. Just following up, I sent you a policy, a draft policy. Um, I have a copy here if you haven't seen it. And that was just to um, address Ed's concerns about um, stewardship of the little free library. I, mean, I still, I still have concerns with it, in the sense that we're offering the town. Sort of library services already through GAFT. That's, that's what we're, we're paying for. Um, and I'm just concerned that um, this body today, you in particular, the volunteer to say, okay, I'll control this, I'll keep an eye on it, and everything, but then what happens when you're gone? Um, it's going to be something that has potential to create adverse conditions within the town, uh, however you want to say it. So, um, and it doesn't offset any other expense that we have. Um, I think it's a great idea if somebody has a, a piece of private property with it, say, bring it on and, and set it up. I think it's a great idea, but, but to do it in the name of the, the town, I think is, is not a good idea. So, is that the consensus? No, that was, that was, that's, that's, oh, okay. that's okay. normal, that's, what, that's correct, okay. is my opinion. That's okay. Ed's opinion. Okay. So uh, the only comment I would say is, um, and there is no agenda, and um, I would be the steward to start out, and I'd have a second volunteer for the times when I'm not around, or to both collaborate, um, and would never not hand it off to someone, so we would just continue to have a volunteer um, steward to, to watch over, um, and that's been done successfully, you know, in the entire community, the communities across the country and the world. So um, that's my input. 
And I think it's generally done on private property, not necessarily. Um, you know, I, I actually did check that, and it is on some public. And in fact, the state of Minnesota uh, just put one up in their state house, so on um, property. So um, you know, there is the. I guess opportunity if there's huge concern to talk to the um, New Hampshire Municipal Association. I think um, you know they could possibly address that, but obviously I can't in my role contact that. That would have to be you guys. You I'm, I'm kind of mixed. You know, I, I like the idea for a community, but I I just question longevity. Will it eventually become? You know, and not kind of an, an abandoned project, you know, and that's that's my concern. Then, you know, um, you know, as long as there's oversight, make sure there's nothing going in that's graphic, whatnot. I'm not looking for censorship, I'm just making sure, you know, appropriate stuff's in there, um, you know, which it sounds like that would be taken care of. I'm just more concerned of just the longevity of it, you know, what, what happens down the road, sure. you know, but. Your secretary, Luke. Yeah. So you were talking about a small modular, right? You some yeah, I, I um, went to the woman for the size that you liked, which was like 24 by 14 by, I think, 27, 28. Um, she is the owner of it over in Maine. And um, so she sent me the dimensions. and. Um, I took that one, and I also took a dimension of the one that's in Union, which is a children's, and it's just a little bit longer. It's, I think, 36 inches. So there's two options that, um, you know, could be done, but, that, I mean, that's totally your call. If you want to discuss it privately, that's fine with me. Mary, have you got a comment? Well, I just would like a little more information about where it would be. Is it outside, inside? Um, we talked about it being outside, and at the... I think two meetings ago we talked about on the other side of the old town hall. Uh -huh. um, and I did create a small sketch that I can leave with you. You could look at it. But um, again, that's um, that was with the input of. We thought the between the gardens on the townhouse and the parking area. On the mm -hmm. townhouse. I just didn't want any confusion with the library books that are in the schoolhouse. Oh, yeah, no, it's. It's not okay. in, not inside because indoors is not accessible all the time. So. Yep. Yes. Thank okay. you. Good point. Mm -hmm. I, I guess my take is I, I'd like to try it for a year and revisit after a year to see how it's working out. If, if 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 it's time to take it down because we've abandoned it, so be it. If it's working well, let, let's go for another year. So. I, I'd make a motion that we go forward with it for one year and revisit it. If the year to see how it's working. That was that was a motion I haven't heard a second yet. So. <laughs> Who would build it? Is it? Would it be donated materials or would the town be? Um, I I would look. I mean, I haven't looked for it yet. I have yeah. someone in mind that I think um, has materials and would probably be willing to donate his. But I've also gotten. Um, a few calls from people who said they will donate so that we can purchase them. I mean, it's a small yeah. amount. So. Yeah, I know it's not a big deal. Right, right. Yeah. right. Um, and I think it'll probably be like $150 worth of materials, maybe. Okay. Um, so, but I know a guy in town, I think he would be willing to do it. And we'd mount it on four by fours or something appropriate, so easy to remove if we have yes. to remove it. Yes. But, it, but so that it would stand, um, mm -hmm. the, I, I have drawing for you, I can show you, but it would be just on a pole three feet high, and then it would go two feet into the ground. But we'd have to make sure, yes. you know, it's stable. I'm, I'm good with for a year, I'll second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, there's another. <coughs> Okay, anything else, Jen? Yeah, thank you. Okay, any other public comment? Great. Yes, um, Nancy Gaber uh, approached me with a um, donation that she and Bill would like to make uh, to the town. I told her I would have to bring it to the selectmen. It wasn't something that I felt I could 
except um, she has uh, three early prints done by Judy Brenner of animals, um, two farm animals from their farm when they had animals, and a uh, and they're kind of small. They're all framed, and the third one is of a um, wild turkey. Uh, the title of it is a Brookfield turkey, uh, the bird, and um, she wanted to donate them with the idea that they get displayed at some point. Um, so I told her I would bring it to you folks. I have a picture of the larger one. It looks to be, I think it's probably about 12 by 16 or 12 by 14. Are they framed? They're all framed professionally. And uh, they're all from Judy's early career, their early 90s. I've never seen the turkey. I've seen most of her work, partly because I cataloged or helped to catalog all the three or four hundred pieces they have at the Gaffney that they're selling. I've never seen this one. I've only seen one of the pig and one of the or none of the sheep. Um, you may recall that we used to have a display out here. Uh, there have been three different exhibits that I had done over the years. When this building first opened, and then uh, I stopped. So that was my next question. Where would we put that? Well, it could be any place. It could be in an office. It could be out front. It could be in here, although there's not that much clear space in here. Um, actually, there, I don't think you'd want to put them up there. I hate to take it, but not, not put them up. Right, I think she would like them to be displayed at some point. I don't know if she expects that they would be displayed permanently. I mean, they could always go into the archives um, since they were town persons. When you said out front, are you talking about as you walk in the door of the hallway? Yeah, we had, we used to have the current cane holder. We'd have a, a kind of a portrait picture of them and a listing of all the different cane, Boston cane owners. We don't have that now. And then on this side, um, we used to have, I, I'd have like 20 five by seven photos of, uh, uh, once I did one on the Lyman Belknap farm, I did one on the, uh, what's now Brad Williamson's house, except back when, in the 30s when it was uh, a Coleman house. And I think I did another one, but I'm not remembering what that is. So if, if we would do it, it would be the large one and then the two small ones on top of each other. This being the large one? That's the large one, yeah. Is it, is it pen and ink or? It's a, it's a print. Judy was a fairly well-known printmaker. Okay. She won't be doing any more prints. These, as I said earlier, were early prints, and they're they're specifically. And the reason why Nancy thought the town might like them is that they're specifically from Brookfield. They all three were sketched by Judy at Gaver's house. And then, of course, she went home and cut the, um, the other copper other plate or whatever. The other two state, the farm, the Brookfield farm one, like this one says the Brookfield. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. What, what, if I were to, if, if you were to accept them and I were to display them, I would create, actually we talked about that. They said they would have a bass, brass plate made giving that information yeah. that Judy was a local artist, is a local artist, and uh, that these were sketched um, on the Gaver farm in the early 90s. <clears throat> I actually have a print that I'm going to be giving to Karen 
of the original Brookfield sign. I, I had forgotten. We have the original Brookfield sign over in the schoolhouse. Okay. It used to be a single pole with an iron bracket and a, a thing like this. And when I was doing Judy's prints at the library, I found one. I'd never seen one. It's a nice, tiny little print, so I'm going to have it um, uh, professionally framed and give it to the clerk. And then I have a color picture of that same sign, uh, which existed before this current two-post sign was put in. I have a picture of when it was received by the selectmen, and you were one of them at that time. Oh yes. Oh no, that's the that's the other side. That's the first <laughs> side. Pardon me. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, I did have a comment because you mentioned that they had like three hundred pictures down at the library, Gaffney Library. Something like that, yeah. Is there a way of maybe swapping those in and like, you know, just swapping them around sometimes, like a year here for the prints? And then maybe bringing in some from the Gaffney Library and giving the Gaffney Library our prints so that other people will be able to see that. You know what I would say? Oh, <laughs> you already did. <laughs> that says it. So what I would say is there are so many. Like we have ones of the cows up at Tapper's farm. Yeah. We have one that she did in did in my backyard at the old house of my uncle's wooden wheelbarrow with an apple tree. Mm -hmm. So there's enough I mean, if there's Judy enough Brenner mm -hmm. pictures in yeah. town, I feel, that they could be swapped out or whatever. Sure. The ones at the Gaffney they're trying to sell <coughs> as a fundraiser, as a fundraiser. but I don't think they'll ever get rid of all of them. I mean, there's a lot of duplications. So we're going to offer to I'll accept uh, some pictures. Are you ready for a motion? Sure. Uh, I'll make a motion that we accept the three uh, pictures that Jimmy's most adorned to the town. From the Gabers. From the Gabers. Yeah. Where are we going to put them? Uh, the, the, to me, it's just, it's, it's a sketch. It's a nice sketch. It's just, where are we going to put them? It's one room <coughs> we're going to have to store them. You know, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a nice gesture. I think it's, I, it's, you know, I appreciate, but I don't see the need and I don't see the room. We, we, we have no room in here. I would put it on the, uh, the outside wall, the smaller wall. One side has the public bulletin board, you have the door, and then they would fit nicely on the outside wall, not the inside, inside wall. And then that also begs the question about should we have uh, Agnes's picture and something about the Boston Cane up? We should do that again. One at a time. One at a time. Yeah. One at a time. I'll second. I think. I think it's. A, I think it's a good move. So. Let's vote all favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you, but no thank you. Okay. What, what did you say? He said no, no thank you. He said okay. no. That was, okay. So would you I'll show it to the yeah. neighbors? And yeah, I'll show it to you before it goes up. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Um, I, do, I just thought of one thing. Um, I, I did attend the um, Stop the Bleed. Presentation that uh, Jan Livingston uh, put it, it was a very good session. There were a number of eight to ten people here. Um, she had talked at the end of that session about doing it again, and I think it's a worthy um, opportunity for people to have um, an emergency situation. I mean, that's exactly what it was. It's something that nobody ever wants to do, but if you come across it, you get some idea of what you can do. Um, you know, so, I received my package today for. Did you? I ordered a package. Yeah. It's good to have around. Yeah. Uh, anything else? That's right. oh, okay, so let's go through the committee report.
the Heritage Commission, do you have something to report, Mary? I do. So I would just like to report that um, we've had about 25 to 30 people attend each of the morning coffees that we've done. The first one on the history of the townhouse and where we're going from here. And then the second one was uh, Kate Dewinhouse and Martha Pike on their flower gardens. And um, they've been very well attended. Um, however, a bit of housekeeping. So. Uh, the Heritage Commission would like to submit to the Board of Selectmen the following names for appointment approval. Harriet Wilson to a three-year term to expire in 2026, and myself as chairman for one year to expire in 2024. Our next event will be another town coffee on June 3rd, and it will be um, Judy Meekin speaking on the Churchill School she attended and her favorite teacher who was Eva Willie and um, David Toll hopefully because he was one of the people responsible for moving it from where it lived um, near the Churchill home to the back of the townhouse so So, Mary Lou, this says you as chairman for one year, but you're on the commission for longer than that. Year. I am my term. Yes, that was done last year. My term for the commission expires in 2025. Harriet was 2026. As, as what position? Just on okay. the commission. She's actually secretary. Okay. So we, we don't appoint you as the chairperson. The committee did, right? The committee did. So we just have to appoint Harriet for three years. That's fine. Right. I usually have listed myself for one year, but it's up to you. Well, we'll put, that on, we'll put it on the website, but your term yep. goes for two more. So I'll make a motion that we uh, take the Hurts Commission's recommendation for Harry Wilson for three years. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 We'll give it to Cassandra for tomorrow. And I've given a new roster to Karen for the town clerk spots. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's see. I've got something on conservation here. Oh, please, yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, the Conservation Commission is, is going to be doing a uh, site walk down, I guess, for lack of a better term, on uh, June 3rd, uh, going down Coggle Hill. And hopefully going all the way to where Old Governor Road connects, and then we would be looking at the town property that's out behind the cemetery, just to take a general view of what's there and what kind of condition it's in. Excellent. And that's open to the public? Yeah, anybody that wants to. I'm not sure where we're going to meet yet. Probably right at Coddle Hill. There's a park in the town parking area. When you go, go down Coddle, Coddle Hill, yeah. on the right, there's a town parking yeah. area for half a dozen cars. That's perfect. That's perfect. <coughs> and I believe the tax bills are going up today or tomorrow. We've got some warrants we'll do on timber monitor later. Town clerk, do we have anything for the town clerk today? Yes, we do. Good evening. Um, just wanted to mention the um, we're in the process of converting to our one check system now. Um, everything's official. The DMV has approved us to do the switchover June 13th. Um, which is a Tuesday, and then Wednesday after I close at 5 o'clock, the installation will take place to update our software so that we'll be ready to go live on Monday um, the 19th. And there will be one of the vendor representatives will be here to do on-site training and support that day. Um, so that'll give me time from when they do the conversion over the weekend. I can do some playing with the system, and then she'll be here to support me through our first big customer day. Um, shouldn't be a whole lot of change. It's just kind of just the nuances of of the software update and entering the data. This means the public will give you one check from now on, and not two checks. Correct. There will be one check made out to the town of Brookfield, and then Joanne and I are working on the process for actually doing the submission to the state, which will be made on a daily basis from our account. It'll give us a lot more control over the, the money. Okay, um, 
So the next thing, uh, Rose and I will be attending our second year of our certification programs, um, August 7th through the 11th in Concord. So it's at a cost of $260 for each of us. It's um, the three-year certification program for a tax collector and for the town clerk. Um, and um, I also just wanted to mention, after careful consideration and talking with Rich a little bit, um, based on customer feedback and also on the volume of transactions that occur on Saturdays, um, the town clerk's office is going to stop having that last Saturday of the month open. Um, we've added hours during the weekdays. Um, and we continue to offer services if people need us to extend the hours on the weekdays or make appointments. I'm always happy to meet with them. But um, there are some other projects going on in the town clerk's office. And the other thing is when we convert to the one check with Interware, they will be our primary source of support, technical support, and they are not open on Saturday mornings. So the state still is, um, not always consistently, for some questions, but as far as IT support, it won't be there on Saturday mornings. Um, but like I said, the, the volume of what we do, really, we can do it during the weekdays, and that seems to be what customers want. They want more evening hours rather than a Saturday. So we'll try it, and if it doesn't work, I'm happy to go back to a Saturday. Fair enough. Okay. Um, and I think that's it. I did check. Um, it does seem like we're doing a lot more e-regs, a lot more transactions electronically, especially over the last few months. So I, I looked back and I tried to pull some data from last year um, versus so far this year, and it looks like we're, we've only done about 10 or 11 more in the first quarter this year over last year. So, but it does seem to be more popular and people are using it more. Um, 10, 10, what's the base number, 10 or 11? What's the, the total number for um, It was last year, it was um, 58, and this year it's 69 to date. And that's vehicle registrations? Um, actually, I have, well, that is strictly vehicle registrations, but um, I've also, this year, which I've never had in the past, and I don't know that Virginia really worked with them, um, I've had vital records requests come through um, for copies of marriage certificates. Um, I had um, a death certificate request, so they do make those requests. They can make them online also. So, the, and, and it's... Um, convenient for people who are married up here and get their marriage certificate here, but they live out of state. They're just getting married in New Hampshire, so they can get certificates that way. Good. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. We have anything for the treasurer tonight? Um, the uh, DRA has approved uh, MS-232, which is the um, appropriations, so that is done. Um, and I have received the uh, town assessments for 23-24 from Governor Wentworth, which um, has down a, a certain amount. So uh, that's all I have besides bills. Okay, any other committees that I missed? Okay, let's do the bills. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. 
And then um, I picked up trash bags for the office of 1949. Yep. And mileage to my conference of 6420. Okay. Okay. And then there was the minutes of 4750. Yep. Um, and the last one was 6650. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, I broke them down separate, and I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Um, Catherine Newhouse, is it Newhouse? Did, am I saying that right? Yes. Um, $114.15 for postage and sending a soil sample. Yep. Long Meadow, $4.45. Uh, Mitchell Group, $135. Mountain View Title Abstracting, $255. And uh, that is it. And then I um, also did the Town of Wakefield on a separate manifest. So uh, the first payment is $122,893.50. Okay. Oh, that is um, insurance. I'm sorry. Right here. 1, 000, that total one thousand four hundred ninety six and three thousand one hundred forty six. Right here, these two amounts. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. And that's it for that yeah. manifest. And then I have one for the town of Wakefield. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I messed up. We're gonna sign that. We make a motion on the approval or something. Yeah. Yeah. Motion that we uh, pay the bills as indicated on the manifest. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Is it valid for a certain period of time and gets renewed, or it would be 
one good, time it's good, only? That's a good question. And the reason it's a good question, if you were going to put a business in town and invest some capital in it, would you want it forever or just a year and have your capital at risk? Right? So I think once we said yes, it's going to be yes. Uh, and now, if, if they if something changes with respect to what they tell us, then I think that's reason to go back and say, hey, you, you can't keep doing that. But I, I, my opinion is I think we have to let them, let them run with the property because they could be investing capital. Right? And then... When you say run with the property, if they sold the property, the, the new owners wouldn't necessarily have that same privilege, right? Well, we, it's up to us. If we want to, if they want to run the business and it's the same business, that, that's our call. So but we want to say, you know, as long as you own the property or as long as you're the business owner, whatever, whatever we want to say. Yep. Okay. okay, so let's talk about that in two weeks. All right, would you mark that up? <clears throat> the other issue I have is it, it's not clear to people in town when they need a building permit. When do you need a building permit? When don't you need a building permit? People are responsible for reading the zoning, but they don't read the zoning. So they, don't, they, they violate their zoning. So maybe one way to force that is to have building permits required for all structures. And that starts the dialogue with the building inspector. And if you talk about what you're going to do, he could say yes or no. I mean, we just got another one tonight that, that I think is it's an issue. And I, I don't think the people knew they had to look at the zoning. So they, they did some things that we'll have to have the building inspector look at, see if it's a violation. So maybe one way to get ahead of that is to change, to change your policy. Building permits are required for, I don't want to say everything, but Generally, everything. We're getting a lot of problems with solar panels. We're getting a lot of problems with sheds. And maybe it's just good to say you need a permit. And it can be minimal cost, but you have a dialogue with the building inspector. I mean, well, not a bad idea. Because also, it would be the chance for the building inspector to remind them of setbacks and other, Absolutely. other organizations that do. That will comply with. Well, it's better. I mean, you're not. If you want to put a birdhouse on top of a four by four post, you're not going to have to get a permit to do that. But the shed, ten by twelve, is it? You think it's size limit? Well, the zoning, the zoning says, if it's bigger than fifty square feet, fifty square feet is like a wood shed, right? That's not very big. Ten by twelve. That can get close to the property line. If it's bigger than fifty square feet. Not a dwelling. It's 20 feet. So your shed has to be 20 feet from the law line. If it's a dwelling, it's got to be 40 feet from the law line. So we're getting a lot of sheds right on the law line. So the owners live if people are not aware. That's he that, to the building inspector. He can, he can talk to them about it. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. <coughs> So what I'd like to propose then is we're going to have to have a public hearing because I suggest that the feedback from the building inspector is we should put on our building fees solar panels because it can be lift the right. There's, there's no requirement for him to look at anything. And along the same lines, he said HVAC. And I guess I know what HVAC is. But if we're going to change fees or add fees, we need a public hearing. So what I'll propose is that I'll bring it to the next meeting, what the new fee structure might look like and what the items might look like. And if we agree, we'll schedule a public hearing. Makes sense. All right. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> that's what I had to carry in. You have some things, right? Yes. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, set the warrant for land use um, change tax in the amount of Twenty-five hundred dollars, and uh, you need to drop me name right now. Doesn't matter. It's public. Burke, Burke, James and James and Jane Burke, revocable trust, the amount of twenty-five hundred. 
$2,500. They're over on Clark Road. They're taking part of their land out. Okay, you made a motion for that. I'll, <coughs> that. I'll, I'll, second, the, I'll second the motion. All in favor? Yep. Yeah. Aye. Aye. And another motion to um, accept the yield levy tax, yield tax levy. And uh, this is on. That's it. Oh, here we go. George Allen property. <clears throat> tax map six, lot seven. And that's in the amount of $696.94. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we've designed this twice, we've designed that twice. Okay. You have anything for him tonight? No, the one thing I want has been resolved, so. <coughs> All right, you have anything else? Is there anything else from the public? Okay, meeting's adjourned. Thank you.
instead of saying, well, I don't know, we do something, yes. We could hand them up. Yeah. Yeah. If it's so on the roof, I'd say no, and it's so on the ground, I'd say yes. Hmm. But there are people getting the solar on their roof, right? Yeah, yeah. a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 I would I would argue no, that's me. Uh, because that's I think they are saving the fees though. Well yeah, because the, there are taxes for that, right? Um, or did no. No, we yeah, didn't want it. Well it came up a couple of years ago. It was, they didn't want to tax it. They wanted the tax break. They didn't want a tax break. Break, break, right? Right. And because um Bob, Bob said he, we're not assessing these because we don't know yet if they're truly an asset. Or... Well, what he's doing is he's mm -hmm. he's inventorying, which means he puts them on the card yep. with no tax dollars, no assessed so value to it. And then if we decide that we want to tax them, he's got all the data. Right, and you got to sign this net a second page. Yeah. 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 The other thing they always ask about is the propane mines. You know. The our installation. Eastern only sends thirty-five dollars. Yes, because I, I, I believe I think I, see, I believe we'll go by Nick again. His issue was solar panels. They're going everywhere. But I think program should be, especially the depth of line location. Give those to back to Zacher for the timber water. Is the new guy looking to come on as a timber water soon? Yeah, well, we don't meet that open now that we sign these. I'll be with him most likely Thursday afternoon to show how I process them. Yeah, let's just try this. Just get some practice in. Yeah, it's easy. Last time, you can do it at home if you want. Right? Well, he generated these. I watched him generate them. But you don't do it very often. Great. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So I have to take this home. Yeah. <coughs> She's still going. Yeah. All right. We're going to the office. Hit I know, no, I know we want to do the right fight.